name is Laura and welcome to my knit night. <laughs> if you're a returning viewer, thank you so so much for coming back and if you are a new viewer, hello, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> um, I normally, I podcast weekly but recently I have been struggling with that a little so I chose to wait two weeks for this one and I'm glad I did because if I didn't I would barely have anything to say this week. Uh, but I have two weeks worth of content so I do have a few things to share with you. I'm coming to you from Lowestoft in the United Kingdom and I live here with my daughter and my husband. My daughter is two and um, I am pregnant and I will talk about that at the end along with uh, maybe a little explanation for I haven't been very active on social media in the last couple of weeks and what I have been up to. So. Um, yes, I, uh, last weekend I went to the Wall Monty, I'll start there because it's definitely the most exciting thing. Oh, um, <laughs> if you are a returning viewer, you will notice we are in a different place. I am sat on my bed because I am just knackered and I just couldn't bother to sit up, I just wanted to be comfy, so I'm sat cross-legged on the bed. If you jiggle, I apologise. You are balanced on a laundry basket with my little tripod on top of and uh, there is awful lighting in this room so I am so sorry um, but if you are a returning viewer you'll know it's no different from the awful lighting in my kitchen. <laughs> um, yes, so I haven't written show notes, always a sign that the episode is going to be a total disaster. I am back to wearing no makeup and being fine with that. <laughs> I am back to getting my arms out because it is summer and I am a hot sweaty mess all the time and can't stand to have anything more than a vest on. Um, and I'm talking in slightly hushed tones so I hope you can hear me. Um, but as I am upstairs and it is 23 minutes past nine, my little girl is asleep. So I'm hoping not to wake her up. It makes a difference. If I'm in the kitchen, I'm directly below her room anyway. So I'm sure there's probably about the same amount of chance she's going to hear. Anyway, where shall I start? I have no finished objects because I am totally useless. And I have a couple of whips. Only one of them is knitting and I've barely done any knitting. It's actually appalling. I don't know if I even have the right to call this a knitting podcast because when you see what I have done over two whole weeks, an entire fortnight, you will be like proper ready to shame me. Okay, so the thing that I have worked on the most in the last two weeks is the crochet blanket that I showed on the last episode. That's what I've done. Like, I do not know what this pregnancy is doing to me. All I want to do is crochet. And I'm rubbish at crochet. I crochet like I'm knitting. I hold my work in one hand and then I hold the crochet hook in the other and I'm like and I'm incredibly slow and I have to look at it the entire time. And um yeah, but all I want to do is crochet. I am a traitor. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> um so last time I spoke to you, I think I was just getting started on this red bobble row and well so everything in this green is what I've done in the last two weeks so currently on a wavy sort of stitch Ellie's still loving it so it's quite big now um I think I can't remember what week I'm on so this is the coastal um coastal crochet um, knit a little crochet along blanket from last year. So, um, Eleonora Tully, Postal Crochet on Instagram, twice a week for I think 35 weeks per post up with a few more rows of a scrappy blanket designed to just use up all of your leftover bits and bobs. I have a ton of acrylic in this house. I'm not really interested in holding on to any of this anymore. There is so much of it, but it was my stash from when I was about probably five years old 
you know, that's about when I started to get pocket money. <clears throat> and every week I would go and spend one pound in my local yarn shop with my grandma and buy a new colour. <coughs> and so I have been stacking up tons. I've been carrying them around my house while I work on this blanket. Two bags this big, full of heart balls of acrylic that have been in my life for years and years. And when I'm finished with this blanket, this blanket will hold a little bit of every single one of those colours. And um, the blanket is for my daughter. And then the rest of it I am taking to the local uh, nursery and children's centres um, for them to use for arts and crafts. Because I need it gone and out of my house. But this way I feel like I've like paid proper, um, given it some proper love considering this was my, this was my stash for like a good, good chunk of my life. Um, I'll be 30 next year, so, yeah, like, a big chunk of my life. <laughs> uh, so, I've worked on that, and then I have worked on one other thing, and it is knitting, but it's so appallingly small. <laughs> it is a cuff of a sock, it is a pink cuff. <laughs> this, um, this sock, I cast on this sock already, and knit a good chunk of the leg, I think I knit the cuff and then a bit of the leg. And it was this yarn, this rainbow stripy yarn from Dragon Hill Studios. And then I was at Unravel with my friend Sharon from the SCR1 TNO podcast. And, um, yeah, we went to the booth, the Dragon Hill Studios booth, and they said, well, wouldn't it be nice if you used the coordinating colours for the cuffs, heels and toes? And I was like, well, I've already started, so I can't do the cuff. And they were like, We'll give you a little box of mini eggs if you want to rip it out and start again. And I'll do anything for chocolate, so I did. And then I didn't start it again. So I have now started with the pink. I'm having pink cuffs on these socks. I am knitting these on Chow Goo 2.25mm needles. And I cast this on a week ago. I cast this on the Saturday of the Wool Monty. It is now the Sunday, so it's over a week ago. Um, Sunday a week later. And yeah. That's all I have done. I have lost all my knitting mojo. Don't know what's happened to me. Um, but funnily enough, it happened with Ellie as well. When I was pregnant with Ellie, I was doing, what was I doing? Tore de sock or something like that. And I had a, a, quite a few complications with Ellie. And I just, I lost all motivation, all energy to knit. And I didn't knit for months like probably the last four months of my pregnancy so I'm going to fight against it this time I really don't want to be in that position again I did go crazy I did go actually stir crazy I read so much it was a, a ridiculous it was ridiculous because I had nothing to do I was like <laughs> but I just couldn't knit I don't know what was going on lost my mojo I don't want to lose my mojo this time and that's all I've worked on in the last two weeks that has to be some hint as to the sort of state I have been in. <laughs> Definitely losing my sanity slowly. Anyway, um, I have hinted about Will Monty, so I'm going to talk about Will Monty. Uh, stash enhancement would normally be the next section on the podcast, and I did some. <laughs> I have been saying recently that I was trying to not spend and wait until the shows and spend at the shows. So my next show is Perth Festival of Yarn. Uh, in September, so now, no more sending until Perth. Anyway, went to the Momonti. It was a bit of a trek, so um, Sheffield was about four hours from me. York is also just over four hours from me. And I have an auntie that lives in York, and I thought rather, I want to go on a Saturday, um, there were lots of people going on the Saturday who I wanted to see, Sunday was Father's Day, and it meant that I got home and could have Sunday at home before I then went to work on Monday. Um, I didn't want to drive eight hours round trip on the Saturday because I'm on my own, it's boring, it gets very tiring and I just didn't want to do it. So Friday night, Chris got in from work, I got in my car with my stuff and I drove to my auntie's, she lives just north of, um, just north of York. And I spent the night with them and then left in the morning and it was about an hour to Sheffield and then went to the show, had an amazing time and then drove home afterwards. Uh, so, got to the show, 
I'm not gonna lie, definitely not in my best state. I felt so sick, like so, so sick. Um, really, really nauseous, was just like sipping. I had to go and get my water bottle filled up as soon as I get got in. I was just sipping water the whole way around. Felt just awful, absolutely awful. But even though I felt so awful, this is a testament to how amazing the company was. I met some fabulous, fabulous people and I had the best time. The best time. And I know I'm going to forget to mention someone and I'll feel awful, so uh, fingers crossed for me. But um, I'll go through the stash enhancement first. So, first thing I'll talk about is this my Will Monty um, tote bag. I am trying to make a thing of getting a tote bag at every single um, show that I go to. So I have one now from um, Unravel, I have one from Will Monty and I have one from Welcome Abbey Wool Show. Those are the shows that I have been to this year and that I am trying to get them from. Oh, I have one from um, uh, yeah, um, The Emporium last year. Yes, down for him as well. Um, but yes, so since October, all the shows that I have been to, I have a tote bag for. I happened to get my tickets to the Walmonty for free. Um, I won a competition on uh, Instagram. It was hosted by Snuggly Stars Yarns, and they were giving away um, a, a pair of weekend tickets to the Walmonty, and I commented and I won them. So. I got in with them and my friend Katie also uh, got in on my ticket. So yeah, got my ticket for free, which I was incredibly grateful for. Uh, and it meant I had another skein's worth of yarn to buy while I was in there. Um, I got one of the free programs and it had like the full layout. So it was in the arena and this is a bit uh, messy because it's been pressed up against stuff and it was open, but you can't even understand the amount of space like them unless you were there i can't even explain it the amount of space in the aisles was huge like huge um you know if they had wanted to pack people in make those spaces smaller then they could have had triple quadruple the amount of stalls um but instead they meant they this space and all the seating that they had meant that not once did I feel ridiculously crammed in, overwhelmed, anxious, anything. It was so spacious. I felt like I could breathe the entire time. It was absolutely lovely. Um, so I'll go through the things I've bought and then I'll talk about the and the things I've got and this, then I'll talk about the um, people and things like that. So the first place I went as soon as I got there was to my gorgeous friend Mia's stall. Mia runs Brambles and Me. And I was incredibly excited because it's her first show. So I was just like, um, had to go and see her and of course had to buy something and support her at her first show. So I bought this gorgeous, gorgeous blue skein. So this is her Ridge Face, which is 100% Superwash Blue Face Leicester High Twist. And it is a four ply yarn, so it's a fingering weight, 100 grams to 365 meters. And it is in the colorway Northern Skies. I'll show you that again. It's so much more vibrant than this in person, it's not coming across. It's so vibrant, it's such a gorgeous blue, it's such a gorgeous blue. I don't have anything in my stash that is like this. And, um... It was actually really hard to pick because her stall was full of gorgeous things. The other thing that I had to get from Mia, every show that I go to, I get pin badge. If it is the badge of the show, then brilliant, like Wolf and Abby, I think I have their pin badge. But if it is just a badge that I really wanted to get, um, then, like, from one of the vendors, that counts too. <laughs> so, um, from this one, my, sh my pin badge that I've got to go onto my bag that I considered to be the one from the Walmonty this year is a Brambles and Me metal pin badge. This is her logo. Can't really see because the light's bad but it's just say Brambles and Me around there. And it has two um, badge backings, you know like um, pin backings and I'm pretty sure these, yeah, 
because I was talking to her about it, but she puts on the lockable backing, pin pin backings. I mean, how, I think this is a die struck, is that what it's called, when they're like this kind of metal, yeah? But yeah, the locking pin backs. So that's one badge that I don't have to worry about losing. I need to get that type of pin back for all of my others because I don't want to use them because I'm so, I don't want to take the bag out in public because I'm so scared I'm going to lose my badges. So yeah, Brambles and Me was my first purchase of the day. Uh, from there, I went to Ducky Darlings. Now, Hayley of Ducky Darlings has sent me a skein before to give away. I think it was in her Derbyshire Blue John colourway, which I have given away and um, absolutely loved. And I was so touched when she sent me that. And then when I saw her there, I was like, I have to go see Hayley. And, I mean, her yarn was just stunning it it was hard to pick because everything was gorgeous but this one practically jumped off the grid wall and had to come with me it's so pretty so pretty so this is ducky darlings um and the colorway is a road trip and it's superwash merino nylon 8020 for play on but yes a road trip which also, I mean, the name, road trip, and I had been on a road trip to get there. So yeah, I love it, I love it, look at that dark in there. It's like black almost. But yeah, absolutely gorgeous. And then I also bought this set of three 20 gram minis, which I just thought were so nice. And these are the January minis. Again, superwash. Oh, this one is 75-25 merino nylon for these this set. But yeah, like a purpley. I think this actually might... I mean, it looks incredibly like Derbyshire Blue John from what I remember. And then look at the speckles in there. And then the pink. So those... Oh, so gorgeous. Then I had a little break. And a walk around and a big chat with a few wonderful people. And then, get my knitting back out, we went to the corner of craft and we went and met Hannah and saw chromatic yarns and got one of Hannah's, I got one of Hannah's stitch markers. I knew I wanted to get one of these. I have not caught them on an update online before. Um, you know, they are, they are on the pricier side for a stitch marker. It's more, um, you know, and, and I totally understand why. I see the work that goes into them. I see the effort. Completely understand why they are what they are. And have no qualms paying out the money. Um, I think this was uh, £13. I have no qualms paying out the money so that I can have one in my stash. I want one of the, I wanted one of these. I wanted one made by Hannah and um, I wanted to be able to choose and yeah. So I am very, very happy with this purchase and I think it is worth every penny. It's on one of those like earring um, clasps and it is a unicorn. And I had to have this as a beaded stitch marker. And if you don't watch the Corner of Craft podcast then what are you doing here because mine is not of the caliber <laughs> um but i'll just flatten him out a little bit because he's been squashed in my bag but i think it was alice dr Soxtagram alice um that i saw had one and i was like that is epic that is the one i want and um i went over and i did browse i did look at them all but i was like no no the unicorn the unicorn is the cutest and has to be mine so I went home with a unicorn corner of craft stitch marker and it is living on the tiniest, most pathetic amount of sock I have ever knit in a fortnight ever. Um, God, I'm sweating, I'm sweating. I'm, like, it's not even warm. I can feel that it's not warm in here and I am sweating. Uh, yeah, so, and then, then um, we went to, um, I say we, me and Katie, um, George and Katie went to Down Sheepy Lane and Down Sheepy Lane had some bargains of the most extraordinary calibre. Um, quite often if you go to a um, show 
you will find stalls that have bought end of lines um, or you know old colourways, other things that they aren't selling anymore or vases that they aren't selling anymore and they are reduced. Um, yeah, loads of people do it and they have little sale baskets and it's lovely. Boundary Lane had a sale basket section and I got these three. They are a DK weight yarn. They all, in person, they all look pretty similar. They look like the same um, colourway. They're all quite speckledy. But yeah, they do all look like the same colourway in person. And they are the DK, 100 grams gained, and they were £6 each. What madness is this? And so I thought, baby blankets. I am going to make a corner to corner crochet. I've never done a corner to corner crochet blanket before. I'm going to make a corner to corner crochet DK weight baby blanket. My baby is going to be born in December. Will definitely be in need of a blanket. I am going to be finding out the sex of my baby, um, but I am a good few weeks away from that. But I am a all colours are for all sort of person. Um, I do dress my daughter in a lot of pink because her favourite colour is now pink and she likes to ask for pink. But um, I also dress her in a lot of blue and um, I dress her in a lot of everything really. Um, we do all colours of the rainbow in our house and um, I have no issue if it's a little girl with having a baby blanket in these colours at all. So. Hooray! I did get another skein from Down Cheapy Lane, but it is a present for a friend uh, that I still need to post off to her because I have just had the most calamitous, like, <sighs> week, um, brain fog of a week, so uh, I'm not showing you that because it's a surprise. And there's only one other thing I bought. I was quite restrained and did not go over my budget this time. Um, I was very proud of myself. I, I pretty much hit my budget spot on. Um, obviously, it's not. it wasn't a cheap weekend for me because I had to put two tanks of fuel in my car. Well, about a tank and a half, but I filled up twice. And um, yeah, so the travel and then food and things, it does add up. Anyway, so the last place that I spent money at the show was with the fabulous Gemma of the project bag. So, oh look at that, the logo. So nice, so nice. So it's a DK weight, so it's 100% superwash merino, there's 230 meters of fairies in the back row. I love it so much. I think I wanted to be a hat for Ellie Still not 100% sure because I love it so much I kind of feel like it needs to be a hat for me. Um, but Ellie would love it. So I could make her another beloved bonnet um, by Tink and Knits because I love that pattern but you know she had one for last year and I think she will have outgrown it by the time um, winter comes around so I think this might be a beloved bonnet for Elle potentially. But yeah, Gemma was absolutely lovely. We had a chat, um, really friendly, really approachable, and um, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn and project bags and stitch markers. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with my purchase. If when you saw me do that, if you recognise this skein, <laughs> um, if you follow uh, Gemma or Mia Brambles and me on Instagram, um, they had a hilarious picture from the weekend where they were both holding skeins like this and I lent my skein back to Gemma to hold on her head. Um, so this, this is famous from that picture. <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely in love with this. So I, I feel like, for me, this was a nice sized haul. Nice, nice sized. Like not, because I think when I went to Unravel, it got quite excessive. Um, definitely went over my budget by a long way and it got quite excessive. This was a really beautifully formed perfect haul that is still quite luxurious um, but not way too over the top to the point where other people go <gasps> um, it all fit in my one bag so um, restraint. <laughs> I had restraint. Right? <laughs>
Um, but that wasn't all that I picked up uh, from the show. So um, people, if, if you know, who've watched before, may remember me talking about my lovely friend Mia, who runs Brambles and Me. And um, Mia had had a clear out of dash, and rather than putting it up for sale or um, you know de stash or anything like that she picked out some things to give to me so I was incredibly incredibly grateful and I gave her like two skeins back I was like oh I don't want these and uh, would you like these and then your sort of thing she's like yeah I'll take them two things she gave me a whole bag so I'm just going to quickly go through what my amazing friend gave to me all of these will go into stash some of them, you never know, might pop up to be given away to people. I don't know. I think I think I'm gonna keep all of these. I love them to pieces. Um I am trying to turn over my stash a little bit and really work out what I want to keep. Um but I think all of these are gonna stay because I love them. Uh and Mia has amazing taste, so I'm very, very grateful to have her um have her things that she might not be uh getting all the joy from and uh, making her feel joy. So the first thing that she gave me, which I just fell in love with, uh, is the Down Sheepy Lane bag and it is a Roald Dahl uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory golden ticket bag and uh, I love, love, love the illustrations from this book. I love them from all the Roald Dahl books. Um, <laughs> I, the Roald Dahl books were, you know, I grew up with them, um, reading I was definitely the bullied, fat, uh, dork at school <laughs> who was always reading and worked in the library. Um, books for my escape, uh, yeah, you know, my, my degree is in creative writing, like, books for my life. And pretty much until I had a child and then don't read half the stuff I used to. But, um, the Royal Dahl books. I still have my very, very tattered copies, which Ellie will not be having. She will have to have her own fresh copies, because mine are very, very, very worn. Anyway, um, she also gave me this typewriter pillowcase full of yarn. So I'm going to go through what we have in here very quickly. So this is epic. This is a sugar and cream, one of the really chunky large balls, 113 gram ones, because the rest I think are 67 grams. So it's like a double size, not quite, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, sugar and cream in this gorgeous colour, so that is perfect because I am making, um, trying to make a uh, face cloth. Oh, I love this, I love this. Oh, oh, I'm caught. Here we go. So, green lambkin yarn in the colourway cobweb, sparkle sock yarn. Can you see the sparkle? Oh, look at that. In this gorgeous purple. And then, where are they because they go so well together? These are all, maybe this one isn't, I thought these were all sparkle. This one, yeah I think they are all sparkle, this one should just have a little bit less sparkle than the others. It's a fade, it could be a fade. A single in white yarn. How? gorgeous are they? I have never faded anything so I now have these three amazing skeins. Then, oh look at this, Love Bug Yarns, MCN sock, MCN, Mia, I did not see it, it said MCN, 10% cashmere, oh, in graffiti, oh so pretty, I'm so soft. Um, then, this grey sparkle, then down Sheepy Lane, a unicorn frappuccino, what a name, okay, and then last but definitely not least, some drops in a pool. That's what I made my um, flax out of. I made Ellie's flax out of. I'm still supposed to be knitting a flax <laughs> for my friend, which I need to carry on with. But this, in a sort of, it looks grey, but it's more of a dark lilac grey. 
eyebrows. Not sure if you can tell. Um, but this could definitely be another toddler sweater. So I was incredibly, incredibly spoiled by my amazing friend Mia. Thank you so much, Mia. You know I, it means a lot to me. I mean, I have got rid of quite a few things recently because I started to feel a bit overwhelmed with things that were not uh, total loves for me anymore. They definitely all were when I bought them, but I just wasn't feeling it as much and I started to feel a little bit overwhelmed with things that I couldn't ever see myself doing anything with, so I passed them on to other people. So now I definitely feel... I definitely feel like I just have things in my house that are beautiful and I definitely want to use and I love them and I'm, some of them I have plans for. So yeah, I'm just really, really happy with everything at the moment. So that's my massive, massive haul from the Woolmonty. It was epic. Just a few notes on the show. So um, there was plenty of parking right on site, right there. It was in the arena at Sheffield, the Fly DSA arena. Um, uh, it's a little hard to get there because there was a big diversion, but I did get there. It didn't really add much time onto my journey. Just a few stressful, desperately signalling and trying to cross lanes and being like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, as I crossed and people were annoyed at me because um, I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, the parking was right out front. The whole venue was just massive and airy and there was no overcrowding. Um, I didn't buy food in there. You weren't able to take, or I think it said you weren't able to take food in there. They did bag check bigger bags, but they weren't like a thorough bag check. Loads of people were in there with picnics. Um, but then anyone who hadn't buried it or hidden it a little bit in their bags, I think they were being turned back to their car with their food. Um, well, when you got in there, I think there was only one option for buying food, like one little cafe stand thing. Um, there was a couple of places you could get drinks though, because uh, I got my water filled up at um, like a bar there opposite the toilets. But there was, you know, it was easy to get to the toilets, the toilets were big, there was no queuing. There was a lot of people there, or it seemed like a lot of people there, but because it was so spread out, you didn't have that feeling at all. Uh, as for people, so I got there and I straight away met my amazing friend Katie of the Geordie Knits podcast. That was pretty epic because we have not met in the flesh. Everyone thinks we have. Oh, forgot to mention, we have our colour work knitting along going on until the end of June. Um, uh, over on the Ravelry groups, we have finished object threads and... We also have our Facebook group, uh, Knit Along with Jordan Knits and Melania Uh So, yeah, I, um, I met up with Katie and uh, the amazing Smoggy Knits, and we, and she brought her mum, <laughs> and we all went in, and they went off and got drinks, and found a place to sit, and found tons of people, while I made a beeline straight for Mia, my lovely friend Mia of Frambles with me. Um, I was so excited for her. She has worked so hard and it's her first show and um, yeah, just go check her out because everything she does is natural, um, natural dye extracts, natural yarns, you know, no nylon, no plasticky stuff in there. Um, you know, she, she really has a, um, a sort of a, a definite brand and um, it's, it's a beautiful one, so go check it out. And then went over and saw Hayley and had a big fangirl moment with Hayley and chat with Hayley of Ducky Darling's yarns. And then went, filled up my water bottle because you couldn't take liquids in either. You couldn't take like um, drinks bottles that were full, but I took an empty drinks bottle and took it and got free water, um, which has been a big deal for me recently because I've been feeling so sick. And it is the only thing, like sipping water constantly is the only thing keeping me human um so then I went and found Katie and she had sat down with an amazing group of people um yeah we saw Dr. Sox Dr. Soxtagram which is Alice um she is a fabulous online member of the community who um we've all spoken to and um it was just really fabulous to actually meet her in person 
and um, pocket giraffe and um, like there was so many people who did we meet we were just walking around we met um, oh now my brain's gone blank this pregnancy is killing me off let me look through my pictures uh, there were so many people we met the um, Cox triplets uh, Terry and Tony and Stephanie and just the of the knit three together podcast I just they were so they are so lovely I mean I've met them before I met them at the Walter Mabby all show um just as lovely this time around chatting to everyone everyone knows those girls and um and they're so friendly and who else um my iPad is not visible um Ishrat Fruitful Fusion on Instagram met Ishrat I was like I can't <laughs> I had a total fangirl moment. Um, I'm definitely going to forget people and I'm going to feel awful. Oh, if I've forgotten you, I'm so sorry. I haven't forgotten you, I've just forgotten to say your name at this point in my podcast. I did not forget you. The memories. <laughs> um, pregnancy brain, please don't blame me. And um, yeah, so just had such a lovely, lovely day. Um, and then it was over like that we got there at 11 and before i knew it it was like half four <laughs> um so we stayed right until the end and then off we toddled and i drove the four hours home and got back and promptly collapsed on my sofa so that's the little monty um i definitely i'm just gonna have a quick recap of the week as well so, I think I've said it before, I'm definitely going to say it again, I am rubbish at pregnancy. Yeah, I have a two year old, she is amazing, I make amazing human beings. Um, the process of building this human being inside my belly, that's the bit I'm naff at. All the way through my pregnancy with Ellie, I was sick every single day until the week after I gave birth. Um, I had horrendous pelvic girdle pain, I was on crutches, I had a support belt around my tummy, I was a state, I was an absolute state for nine months. Um, this time around, marginally better because I'm not being sick every day, but at the same time worse because I feel sick every day, all day, whereas with Ellie I was throwing up and then feeling better at least for a while. This time round, I, I, there is no feeling better. And I am still being sick, like many days, <laughs> not every single day, but I am, there is a good few days where I am being sick, but the sickness then doesn't go away. And with it, there's like a dizzy nausea. Um, plus, I feel knackered, absolutely knackered. I'm so tired, it hurts. And I sweat. I'm so hot. It's like I am an actual radiator. And my date got pushed back. I had to go for another scan. And they pushed my date back. And so now I'm only 13 weeks, or no, 13 and a week, bit weeks pregnant, instead of like 15 weeks pregnant. So it's just added two weeks of misery onto my life. Um, yeah. And everyone was like, oh, first trimester, maybe it'll go away. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not loving life. I'm not loving life. Um, other things, I mean, I, I'm, I've been quite open, I think, about my mental health on the podcast before. Um, I have struggled with mental health in the past with um, like depression and anxiety. I am the sort of person that lets things build up until I can't handle anymore. And then it all, you know, it all stacks up and I'm like left in this absolute mess. <laughs> Uh, a week and a half ago, I went back on antidepressants for the first time in a good few years. Um, it was a really, really big and hard decision for me to make. I spent a long time on antidepressants and then I worked incredibly hard to make changes in my life and then work myself off of them. There is, in my opinion, no shame whatsoever in taking medication to be able to be mentally well which is what I am taking them for. Um, I have no shame in this at all. It was just the fact that I went through a process 
and it was incredibly hard work and I came out feeling like a stronger, happier person and I feel like I may have worked my way back, you know, backwards in that process and now um, it's a bit harder to deal with. Um, so I've been a little absent on social media, especially Facebook, Instagram, Ravelry, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I've been in a bit of a brain fog and I'm still in one now if I'm honest. It's taken me a week of gearing up to sit down and talk for this long. I feel like I am fuzzing through every day with no motivation and no ability to just do anything, get normal jobs done. Um, every single bit of energy that I have is going into entertaining my toddler and trying my absolute best to still be a good mum and everything else. I mean, I'm not replying to messages quite often. I just can't face them when they build up. Uh, I've tried making lists over the past few weeks of things I need to get done because the jobs are just, they're mountainous. And then I bury my head in the sand and don't do any of them. And it's like I physically can't, can't do anything about that. It's like I have a block where I can't do anything. So I'm smiling about it now because I have accepted it. But there have been times over the past few weeks where I've been in tears because I just can't process how I feel. Um, I'm, you know, I'm letting people down in terms of my friends. Some of my friends have had pattern releases and have had, you know, um, life events and things going on. And I am normally a support, and I am normally there, championing and, and shouting and going, yes, come on, and you know trying to be there as much as I can for other people and in return they are quite often there for me but definitely over the last few weeks I've been beating myself up about the fact that I have not been messaging people first time I have not been um, giving some of my friends a ring and asking how they are and I've just been in this little bubble in my head uh, it's my birthday this week so uh, today's Sunday it was my birthday on Thursday I was 29 and I think I'm going to do a promo code maybe on my on Instagram. I might set up tomorrow for a week of uh, maybe 29% off or something like that. So I meant, again, it was something I meant to do on my birthday. I was going to do it on Thursday and let it run all the way through until Sunday. And then I just didn't do anything. And doing anything feels like a huge, huge effort that I just don't have, don't have at the moment. I don't have that effort in me. I had a lovely birthday. Chris couldn't get the day off work, but we sat in bed and opened presents. Well, Ellie opened my presents for me. Uh, Chris bought me two garden chairs, um, the zero gravity recliner type. I've wanted them forever. Um, and then uh, I got some money. Um, I got some really sweet little things. I got a plant. Um, I got Pandora charm for my bracelet from my uh, in-laws. Um, just some really, really sweet, lovely little thoughtful things from other people. And lots of um, happy birthday wishes, which I was very, very grateful for. And, um, yeah, I had a lazy morning around the house where I dozed while Ellie played. And then took Ellie to her swimming lesson. And then my parents had the... Um, a day off, they took the day off and my dad looked after Ellie and me and my mum went to a shop and bought some plants um, some hard to kill plants because I kill all plants and um, and then Chris got back from work and we all went for a meal together where I again, pregnancy thing I ate like half a portion I am normally a 
like I'll eat my portion and your portion and your portion and let's keep it coming and bring the food and um, this time I ate half a share starter with Chris and then I pretty, pretty much ate nothing of my main and had them wrap it up so I could take it home and then I got a dessert because I have a separate stomach for dessert right everyone has that right savoury stomach dessert stomach well I do and um yeah I had my uh, I had like half my dessert and then I fed the rest to Ellie so I don't know what is going on with me <laughs> um yeah so I we had that it was a lovely day it was a really lovely day and then on Friday me and Ellie went to a kiddies class and then afterwards I went to um Aldi with my birthday money <laughs> And Halfords. I went to Halfords and got a pump because there was no way I was going to blow this up. Um, but I'll see if I can find this online so I can just show you guys what I bought with my birthday money. Um, I totally appreciate that I... Um, I'll see if I can... I totally appreciate that I spent my birthday money on my toddler. I gave myself the gift of a little peace and quiet. So I do not feel... Um, like, I have missed out. A few people were like, you spent 30 quid of your own birthday money on this. And I was like, yeah. Yes, I did. And I do not regret it. Now it's not loading. Now it says 69 people are looking at this right now. Okay, it is epic. It is a paddling pool. Play Center, my incredibly dirty iPad, but it has this paddling pool, it is, it is huge, and it has this dinosaur on the top, and there is a sprinkler that comes down here, this is a slide with a little like bum pad, so they don't like clunk straight onto the floor, there's these balls, there's this run thing at the back that the balls can go through, and there's this other dinosaur who's a hoop, and you can throw the balls through the hoop, and then there's some inflatable rings, and there's another dinosaur that has a pointy nose, and you can throw the rings onto his nose, and it is just epic. So I bought a pump from um, Halfords and it still took me an hour with the pump to blow it up. So uh, good thing I got it, otherwise we could have been there forever. And then I um, set Ellie loose on it for the afternoon on Friday because it's lovely weather. And I sat in one of my birthday recliner chairs and just watched her play for like two hours. And then my sister-in-law came around with her toddler, who's the same age and they played for another two hours <laughs> so um and i just sat in my recliner for like four hours very lazily yeah um and then yesterday was saturday and i worked because it's my weekend to work and then it's the lowest off festival of light this weekend um and it's the first year they've done it and it's on the beach and so we went down to the beach after work with our friends and then had dinner with our friends and then today we've done house things and we took ellie strawberry picking um, because she loves it, she calls it hide and seek with the strawberries. <laughs> um, but yeah, we did strawberry picking. And I am so tired, and I feel like I could sleep for a week. But my toddler will be up at 7 tomorrow morning, and I definitely can't sleep for a week. <laughs> I've got work the next couple of days, and then five days in a row off. And I'm going to really, really try hard this week to engage on social media. Because I feel so much better when I do, because there are so many amazing friends that I have made on social media, uh, that I you know, I keep on top of it and I keep chatting to my friends, then I don't start to feel isolated. I won't still I won't start to feel so awful about my um, situation in terms of feeling unwell, and um, you know I'm I'm waiting for hopefully my antidepressants to really kick in and. Um, I do know that with the one I take, the first seven to ten days you can feel nauseous, so that might be adding on top of my already cruddy nausea. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I'm going to talk about this week. Um, I might add in a few clips at the end of the warm auntie because I meant to vlog and then just had such an amazing time and didn't half as much as I was going to, um, and I was just so knackered. Hopefully Perth will be a different kettle of fish because Chris will be driving all the way up so I will be kipping all the way up <laughs> and uh, we'll feel rested when it comes to the weekend. Um, yeah, 
therapist in general and hoping that I might feel a little less um, naff with this pregnancy by the time Perth rolls around as well. Anyway, I'm going to clear all of the yarn off my bed and there is a lot of it and I am going to go to sleep with the windows open because it's so boiling hot in here I am frying you could fry eggs on me it I don't know it might be a heat reaction or I might just be stressed because I do get hives when I get stressed but I've been getting red lumps coming up and I'm not quite sure if it is um heat or stress or what um, but yeah, I do come out in hives both for stress and sometimes I get a bit rashy with heat as well. Very attractive. I bet you just love to hear that. It's all real life here. Real horrendous mum life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm an oversharer. I'm an oversharer. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go. going to go to bed and uh, leave you with that and I'll upload this tomorrow. Thank you so much if you're stuck around to 50 minutes. 50 minutes um i have really enjoyed actually sitting down and talking to you because you know when you feel like you finally get something done that you had on your list and you haven't been getting anything done you guys are one of my things on my list and um you're a really important thing so making sure that i come on here and chat is uh, keeping me in touch with the outside world where sometimes i get a little isolated so um thank you very very much um yeah as always, thank you so much for making me so much less of a lonely knitter. <laughs>